with the recent successful, albeit late, release of the 700 Tenere, Yamaha is still pushing the 1200 Super Tenere, the bigger brother. Most of us in the ADV riding community are questioning if this motorcycle still has room in the market, which has started a much needed shift towards smaller, lighter, and more dirt capable motorcycles. In this review, I'm not only gonna break this motorcycle down for you and review it completely and comprehensively, I'm also gonna argue that this motorcycle still definitely has its place in the adventure touring industry. Hello and welcome to Pongia, bienvenidos, servus, welcome, buenos dias, bienvenidos, greetings riders and welcome to another motorcycle review by Pegasus Motorcycle Tours and Consulting, yours truly Nick here with my business partner Pong behind the camera. We're here in this magnificent Sierra Nevada mountains. This is the Eastern Sierra range. Doing a little scouting trip, we were contemplating how to share this with our community and we're going to be releasing a private tour of this region. I think Pong being a landscape photographer is out here literally every weekend living out here and just getting to know the region and he's accumulated so much knowledge of this area. So he's the best guide for this kind of uh, this kinds of landscapes where you can take the in the mountains and the, the snow covered ranges and the little streams and whatnot so we want to share that with you I'm here on my 2020 Yamaha Super Tenere ES I've decided on this bike besides it being very big and heavy over my KTM 690 for reasons that we're going to discuss but before we get into that I wanted to let you know what this video is about this is going to be a complete comprehensive and conclusive review of this awesome motorcycle a beast of a machine truly and you're gonna get a little bit of the history of it and you're gonna get my opinion basically on what I think this bike is all about who it's for and what its limitations are so before we get into that I'd like to first thank you for being here if you like what we do now you've been with us for a while we've been doing this for three years please remember to like subscribe share and hit the notification bell so that you get notified when these motorcycles come out because as you know on this channel all the motorcycles that i review are my own i review them after i get to know them so you're not just getting first impression ride down the road you're getting a little more for for your time here i appreciate you being here and i want to make sure you get all the information you need i favor definitely smaller adventure touring motorcycles because most of the time i'm touring by myself and i'm always exploring new roads and i i need to have more confidence in being able to do hard dirt stuff that I'm not familiar with or that I don't know what's what's coming rock gardens for example steep sandy climbs but I also need to be able to carry all my luggage all my filming gear and extra tools and extra parts so I've always been more in favor of the smaller motorcycles if you look through my playlist you'll find a review of nearly every 650 adventure touring thumper in the used market so I, I definitely know that market very well. So this is a bigger motorcycle than I would normally take on adventure touring trips. But I'm glad I did this time. It was between this bike and my KTM 690. That's a 2017 model, just an amazing motorcycle. But the thing is, with Eastern Sierra, it can get so windy, so incredibly windy. It's bouncing you all over the road. And a bike like this takes it in stride. Now I'm touring with a hiking pack on the rear seat as you normally see me tour. That has all my other gear because everything else is occupied by mostly filming equipment to be honest and extra parts, extra equipment, etc. Cooking gear because I come out here to camp and to enjoy this place quote unquote the proper way. It has a lot of advantage to the heavy weight that this bike carries. So let's start there first. This bike weighs in at 585 pounds. That's around 265 kilos. That's a heavy, heavy motorcycle. Now, this one is heavier because I do have the luggage and I have the protection and the skid plate. All of that adds weight, uh, among other things that I have added to this motorcycle, which I'll, I'll guide you through. It's a very heavy machine and you definitely feel it. You feel it as soon as the front wheel starts to lose a little bit of the grip. 
but look at where you can you can get this motorcycle to take you you know with a little bit of experience that's just basically what you need with this kind of machine the bigger motorcycle you have to get comfortable in letting it float underneath you and with that kind of experience you're off to some amazing adventure so absolutely an awesome motorcycle an awesome adventure touring machine and an absolute beast on everything you can throw at it now knowing and respecting its limitations you don't want this on any kind of soft ground it's just not comfortable feeling so much weight loose from underneath you yes you get used to letting the motorcycle flow and float underneath you however uh, that's only fun to a certain extent if you lose traction for real and the bike is doing what it wants to do it's very easy to get hurt but look at how gorgeous this area is i have this campground all to myself and this motorcycle got me here and it did beautifully i actually was very comfortable to rock it in third gear up this mountain and it's just it's been a joy look at this beautiful tree enjoy this amazing natural art that the eastern sierras have to offer there's a beautiful little welcome sign to this kind of uh secluded campground look how gorgeous this thing is so in big swooping turns on asphalt of course this motorcycle just shines i mean the weight just kind of sticks the motorcycle to the ground and you're taking that corner uh, it's basically taking you for a ride And I, I do enjoy that. I, I, I like big bikes. You know, I ride the Goldwing and I had the electric glides and I, I really do enjoy big motorcycles. So it's a, a pleasant surprise to be able to take a big bike like this on a serious adventure, on, a, on an actual motorcycle ADV touring adventure. So, so far I'm in love with this motorcycle. Don't get me wrong. You don't want to take this bike anywhere where there's deep sand or very, very loose gravel because you'll feel the weight of this motorcycle. Although it is produced in such a way that some of the weight is actually fairly low. That's thanks to the parallel tw twin engine and actually the lower, uh, well, the gas tank, there's parts of the gas tank that actually sink below the frame here. So uh, they did keep that in mind to keep the weight centered low, but you definitely still feel uh, a nearly 600 pound motorcycle. And that here actually it is over 600 pounds. It's, it's holding itself look at that and i'm just off the road look at that it goes to show how dangerous it can be to to get on the shoulder especially with the big heavy bike like this here you see a 600 pound plus motorcycle completely standing on its own because i'm not even a foot off the highway and it's just so loose you know the question here is, is this bike something that uh, serious adventure touring motorcyclists should consider on transcontinental adventures? And I think it absolutely is. It absolutely is because for those mile munching requirements, there is hardly something better than the Yamaha Super Tenera ES. This is a 1200 cc motorcycle. So you do get the power to push through the wind to, to eat up the miles without fatigue that's key and you do get the power to pass vehicles to pass trucks in these areas there were signs warning trucks and trailers not to do that route because it's so windy they don't want to you know have to worry about overturned vehicles so that's the kind of conditions that you're going to be fighting through on transcontinental adventure touring odysseys this bike is produced with that in, in mind but in those times that you actually need to uh, hit some dirt roads explore find a campsite go visit a, a less visited place then you need a bike that's capable on dirt and this has the ability to do that 
So on hard packed dirt like this, I mean, you can be doing 60 miles an hour before you start to feel the bike, you know, sway a little bit back and forth, but it's just beautiful, super stable. And also, despite its weight, or maybe because of its weight and its low center of gravity, when you're just slow moving around the campsite, it's very stable, it wants to stay upright. There's Pong with his beautiful adventure van. So let's talk about the power plant. 1200 cc motor again this motorcycle has been around since 2010 um, a little bit of just a, a little bit about the history of the the, the the name for example even comes from the sahara desert it's a it's a region in the sahara desert and the tenere is riding on the very impressive history of yamaha in the paris dakar back when it was still raced in the african continent so this motorcycle takes all that technology and puts it in this beautiful modern very technologically advanced machine that starts with the power plant a proven super reliable 1200 cc motor it has around 117 horsepower uh, somewhere around there 100 i think 14 foot pounds of torque uh, at 6000 rpm so it's uh, very torquey and very usable throughout the rev range so if you get stuck in some difficult conditions slow riding you still have power to pull pull you out of there without the engine trying to stall or bog down i actually haven't had an experience of stalling on this engine so i was kind of impressed it carries its weight quite well in that regard so the engine again parallel twin what is it 170 degree is the angle of the uh, the crank itself so it keeps the center very low and very importantly it's a dry sump lubrication system i spoke about this when i reviewed the aprilia futura sport touring motorcycle so there's numerous benefits to the dry sump lubrication system uh, mainly it allows for a lower center of gravity because you'd no longer have the sump or the oil reservoir basically underneath the engine the the oil is stored throughout the engine which actually on this motorcycle is also uh, a stress point so the machines design kind of like the new Harley Davidson Pan America uses the engine as the rigidity for the frame and the stress point so with the ability to move the oil from the bottom of the engine throughout the engine itself then you remove all that weight that's underneath and I believe it's four quarts of oil so it's a, it's a significant amount of oil but you also are able to utilize more oil which makes it run cooler the dry sump system is mostly used in performance aircraft so if you ever seen those races red bull air race whatnot those airplanes are so capable and they turn on a dime and in that turn all those g's of force have a tendency to push or, or pull the oil away from the moving parts and for that split second the oil is not reaching where it needs to be so all of that is avoided with the dry sump system because you no longer have gravity pushing the oil and the crank inside the oil pushing the oil but you have two pumps pushing the oil throughout the system at all times basically equally no matter what the motor is doing so it's kind of uh, nice in that way because you're never straining the engine because of uh, a lack of oil even for a split second so there's that there's also when you slush the oil around it creates air bubbles and that's also obviously not great for lubrication so this not having that function in fact just pumps pushing the oil there is no sloshing effect and actually some power loss happens from that sloshing effect of uh, the oil having to be pushed around in there so there's numerous benefits of a dry sump system I think uh, my Honda XR 650L uses it as well most of Aprilia's use it the DRZ Suzuki 400 uses it as well so it's very specific and it's an improvement over the wet sump lubrication system which is traditional so it, this motorcycle has that as well four valves per cylinder and two spark plugs for a better more efficient burn so it's pretty impressive but they also there's other technical advances like shorter skirt on the piston for weight etc a, a very satisfactory engine now is it sufficient to power this motorcycle for this kind of use with luggage loaded maybe a passenger yes it's not mind-boggling power for example if i'm riding next to a 1250 gs actually just the other day he twisted a throttle going 70 miles and took off like a bullet I can't keep up with that you know this bike doesn't have that kind of power uh, do you need it if you need it then you might need it I'm okay with with the power delivery on this motorcycle the way it is 
again it's not mind-boggling power it's it's kind of like the lower limit of power that this bike needs to have to perform well so that's perfectly fine with me and you can adjust that power delivery with two modes the sport mode and the turning mode I'm not a huge fan I like having the option but the way that this has been organized it's a little bit lacking because in the sport mode the motorcycle is very jerky it's very twitchy it's not super smooth like you would expect a refined motorcycle like the Super Tenere to be and in the Turismo mode it's kind of slow it, it, it I'm not sure when you would use that really I mean I have a Moto Guzzi California 1400 so huge transverse twin 1400 motor and that has three modes it has the Turismo the rain and the sport and in sport mode the thing is hyper and in rain mode it's completely tame where you know you're not gonna kick out the back end on wet pavement and in Turismo mode it's kind of like all right this is where I'd like to be every day I'm just going to work I don't need to be all hyper when I get there so those three modes are very specific in this bike a third mode would have been also enjoyable in that regard so that the difference between the two is not, not so abrupt because if you go from touring you're like ah this is slow and then you go to go to uh, the sport mode ah this is too glitchy it, it's too much of a change at once so I think a middle one would have been uh, really great to add to that um, that's all I can say about that I mean it's good to have an option I'm, I'm glad they included that and it's very easy to adjust with your right thumb there's a, a mode button and you push it to the side and you switch that on the fly so so much for the engine six speeds transmission with uh, the six being overdrive for those highway speeds really really nice and I like the gearing the gearing is very satisfactory I haven't found a desire to be changing anything in that regard and you really here with the shaft drive you can't really alter the sprockets to, to manipulate the gearing delivery so this is a shaft drive motorcycle maintenance free it's an enclosed shaft it's basically hidden in the left side of the swing arm so that there's there's really no maintenance in that regard you change the oil every now and then but it's super simple to do so it adds weight to the bike but for these kinds of trips you don't want to be messing with the chain all the time you want something that's hands-free kind of labor-free design so I really really appreciate that part of the motorcycle another thing that I wish this motorcycle had was some form of a slipper clutch system because oftentimes you'll get into a corner kind of quickly you do have the power for for that kind of asphalt cruising and you'll you'll feel the the rear wheel lock up for a second when you shift down abruptly so for a motorcycle of this way I think that's very necessary so we spoke about the power the transmission the linkage the delivery let's talk about the next very important factor for these kinds of machines the suspension 43 millimeter KYB inverted forks in the front just absorb everything that the road can throw at it in everything that I've done on this motorcycle off-road I've never actually had a chance to feel like I'm losing my fight with the suspension because of course it is a heavy bike I've never bottomed out which is also kind of impressive you get 7.5 inches of travel in the front as well as in the rear and of course the 19 inch front wheel is a little bit limiting for sure combined with the 17 up front if you're going downhill on anything that's mildly loose even the the, the weight of the motorcycle will really dig that wheel in and you're kind of having to fight again this is not a motorcycle for any kind of serious off-roading if you're riding anything like this fire roads uh, really hard packed roads it's fine it can do it but um, the weight is really felt when you start riding on roads that are looser and it's fully adjustable I believe there's 21 levels of adjustment and it's all done electronically so that's kind of neat you have uh, it's actually a pictogram you choose by picture if you're one passenger with luggage single passenger without luggage two passengers or two passengers with luggage and then you can also adjust your, your dampening the way you'd like and everything is push button the motorcycle does have to be on and not moving if you want to have the full range of adjustability between those I believe 21 levels of adjustment and fine-tuning of the suspension so I like that previous models of the Tenere you had to crank down underneath the seat here everything is push button and I do appreciate the ease in which uh, you can do that even on the, on the fly so that's really really great the suspension does really well I've noticed on you know what you're gonna find in California on these roads due to rain and weather we call that 
the washboard kind of road where it's very wavy and very uncomfortable to ride. This bike really took it fine. There's no weird rattling. You're not fighting the bike. It's heavy, but if you stand in your foot pegs and you let the bike float underneath you, the bike is carrying the weight. So you don't really have to fight it too much unless of course it gets down to very deep sand. So speaking about the foot pegs, a very, very awesome design is these not really convertible because you don't have to do anything but uh, the rubber on the foot peg is soft so it actually when you stand on the foot peg it decompresses naturally and then you're contacting the metal teeth of the foot peg so there's nothing you need to remove nothing you need to adjust this is the way a foot peg should be to be very honest it's wide enough to be comfortable to stand all, all day long for me I'm 5'8 stock handlebars and I'm very comfortable even on the highway with the wind I can stand and, and just in, enjoy being stretched out for a while so the foot pegs awesome awesome design speaking of the wind adjustable windscreen this is a taller windscreen by v-stream where i ride it's typically in the desert and it's always very very windy so it's nice to have a, a taller windscreen right now it's on the lowest of the four positions it's manually adjustable so you can do it on the fly it's a little hard to pull it up when you're going 70 miles an hour because you're getting all that wind and the effects but it can be done so when it's in the lower position even this higher windscreen I still see over it which is kind of nice because I don't like to be looking through the glass if I don't have to so and I don't have any kind of buffeting even with my showy adventure touring helmet with the roost guard and whatnot so I, I like this setup more so than the, than the stock and I think it looks right uh, it looks very aggressive when it's when it's actually raised so the wind protection is great and the fact that they lowered the engine uh, allows the ability for the intake to be positioned in such a way where it's acting kind of like a ram air intake I mean it's just sucking all the cold air that's coming from the front of the bike and uh, on this left side of the motorcycle you also have the radiator so the radiator with the round fan uh, keeps the engine constantly I've never seen it go over 200 while I've been I've been riding so it's the coolant's never climbed over 200 Fahrenheit so it's pretty pretty nice so that's a very smart design and on the opposite side of this very large fairing which protects you for the wind is the battery the battery is accessible by removing these four bolts which actually remain in the fairing itself they don't come fully out so you can't really you lose them I, I like that a lot and under the seat you actually get the Allen wrench uh, that's where they place it stuck on the seat so it's kind of nice it's convenient enough and of course when you have engine protection like this it makes it a little a little difficult to work on but it's still accessible it's able to accommodate a lot of aftermarket uh, uh, equipment and add-ons I have lights I have a Zumo GPS system I have phone mount I have cold weather heated gloves as well that I can operate from this motorcycle and all of that works fine thanks to a very compact 600 watt magneto that they've included on this motorcycle as well they, they understand that the customer is going to want to add things to this bike so so I like I like the design normally the the battery is usually found under the seat but uh, in this motorcycle it's here and it's fairly accessible speaking of the seat it's a very intelligent design it comes with two possibilities of height adjustment so it comes from factory with the higher adjustment of 34 inches and you can drop it down to 33 33.3 or something to that effect and it's very easy there is a plastic frame underneath the seat that you literally just kind of remove and the seat drops by an inch very very smart design and another very smart thing about the rear seat the passenger seat is if you remove the passenger seat underneath it there is a platform that extends the luggage carrying platform uh, behind the seat so the top case carrier basically so you have now more of a flat space for uh, extra luggage carrying capacity if you don't have a, a need for an extra seat for a passenger seat it's a very very smart design because it's important to have a flat space to work on so that the luggage is better situated better accommodated speaking of the luggage I actually have two sets of luggage for this motorcycle Jivy cases that are fairly small and come with their own um, mono key frame uh, square frame and these uh, OEM Yamaha side cases I believe they are 37 liters on, on the sides and 30 liters on the top case they share the same key as well so you there's no need to care you know to have another key it all uses the same key although I gotta say 
the ignition key is fairly long and only half of it goes into into these cases to unlock them and sometimes it's not really smooth operation I'm always panicked that I don't break it because I've actually had to fish out broken keys from luggage before actually the JV cases that are on my Honda VFR I posted that video as well if you're interested of how to get a broken key out of a lock there's a tutorial for that as well so take a look it's like a love-hate relationship with these cases I'm starting to absolutely hate this mechanism it feels very rough and you can see how little of the key is inside and I just don't feel like I even want to open it for fear of breaking it so it's so far fairly unfortunate experience because it's decent looking although it, it doesn't really match the bike in the sense that it, it's very shiny it shines too much there's a lot of glare they're very aggressive looking uh, they're very bright as well uh, I wish they weren't so slippery on top because when you have it parked you take your stuff off things tend to fall off that's another thing I would uh, you know you could you could put some kind of a uh, material on top to prevent things from sliding off and they're not fully aluminum the aluminum is just basically the skin they're plastic and I've noticed very importantly with my aftermarket exhaust the pipe is shorter and it's starting to melt the left side case uh, actually melt through it it's kind of impressive uh, I assume that happens when I'm staying you know in a red light or something idling I'm not really sure but it's significantly short, shorter pipe uh, that pipe actually saved me 10 pounds of weight the original pipe weighs 13 pounds this one only weighs three so worth worth the upgrade but not at a cost of a melting your plastic side case so the side cases themselves they're they're fairly light they're fairly easy to remove as well right side locks the case left side removes it from the mounting brackets but what i like most is the intelligent bracket design you don't have the traditional rectangular frame you just have one bar on top that's fairly out of the way it's hidden you don't really it doesn't stick out uh, it doesn't hurt to look at and uh, from the passenger foot peg there's an extension where the side case rests and it's also if you notice it's not super positive closing like I wish that was closed better and again you really have to confirm that it's closed because sometimes you push it down and so this is just a 30 liter box I have all my my drones my filming equipment so in that regard it's useful but you have to push it and close it in the middle it's not super positive and it's still you know it's still doing that um, to, to remove this one basically you're just locks take it off I've been having a lot of issues with this luggage because it's completely stripped out both the bolts that hold not only the luggage but the passenger and rail there are stripped and the bolts will come almost all the way out so I'm having to basically connect it to this other strap point which is nice that you're, you supply that and I, I have one going around kind of keeping it up the only thing that's holding it up is the foot part and I've noticed how they, they have these natural rails so that's really kind of smart you can put more stuff on it and use this to prevent the cables from the, the strap from sliding up I would improve it by adding more handles especially on the actual lid part I like that the lid part opens up because then nothing's spilling everything is in its place the right hand uh, case is square it's just interior is very square and ample the left uh, case is a little bit different because it has to accommodate the exhaust pipe so I would recommend them though over my Jivy cases my Jivy cases simply are too small I haven't noticed any difficulty in lane splitting as well in California one benefit is we can ride between cars you're never stuck in traffic and I feel very comfortable with this setup to lane split of course my bike is wider because of the, the cage and the cases themselves but uh, it's totally okay once you get a little comfortable with lane splitting then uh, th it's no problem to do it on this bike if you're interested in lane splitting I have a two-part video on that as well I, I often people notice uh, I lane split in my reviews and I get these not angry but uh, cautionary 
comments, but I, I assure you it's legal. I feel very comfortable doing it. And contrary to popular belief, it's actually quite a bit safer for motorcyclists to lane split. So if you want to get to know some of those interesting facts, you can look at my lane splitting video and tutorial. So it allows you a little bit of workspace as well. You can do your Zoom meetings in the great outdoors. Why the heck not if the opportunity allows it? So I, I like this system. I wish that there was a way that these locked into one another so that there's no uh, opportunity to drop your computer, for example. But this is a good height, it's comfortable, and it's, it's a good setup. Uh, the bike comes with a center stand. Uh, it's, it's a heavy bike. Uh, when you have it loaded, you're not center standing anything, especially not on loose ground, but it's nice to have that. When you're maintaining the wheel, for example, you need to remove the wheel on the go, and of course these are spoked rims. In the front you have these two rails basically that give the, the rim strength and that's where these spokes connect to so it allows the ability to install a tubeless tire. Tubeless tires are arguably easier to, to maintain on the road. That's a heated subject so we don't have to go in, into that but uh, I'm riding a Dunlop tires on this, the Trailmax mission and so far it's been okay. Tire is also a very subjective opinion so not really going to go into details there but I like the fact that they're tubeless because they're easy to plug. You don't have to carry an extra tube for example because they're very cumbersome. They're very big and heavy, take a lot of space so I'm a fan. I like this a lot. In the rear wheel there's only one middle rail in the middle of the wheel instead of two like there are in the front and uh, of course tubeless as well and I love this purple offset color on the motorcycle. Really, really beautiful. Uh, the only difference from the front part here is I have this aluminum uh, protection basically for the inverted forks. There you have it. So the brakes, awesome. Awesome brakes. I mean, you're going 60 miles an hour, you hit the brakes, they they actually, they're, they're linked. So the front brake, when activated first, it will apply the, the rear brake automatically. If you don't like that system, all you have to do is apply, apply the rear brake first and it cancels that system out. Very, very intelligent. I have no qualms about it. I like this system. It's, it's smart and it does the job. These are, I believe, 12.1 or something to that effect inch rotors. And in the front and in the rear, it's 11.1. It's a floating disc, of course, with the Yamaha brakes. These are also the brakes that are used in Yamaha R1 and the Warrior, for example, the lineup. I speak about these brakes when I review the Warrior as well. Another Yamaha line of motorcycles that I absolutely, absolutely love. Really, really powerful brakes to stop this bike. So Yamaha's technological advances show even in the ABS braking system that's available on this motorcycle. For me, ABS always kicks in a little early, but if, you're, if you stomp on this motorcycle on pavement, you'll feel the ABS, both front and rear, uh, kick into gear but it's completely controllable which I like a lot so uh, control is the, the name of the game for big bikes like this. ABS module is located inside this ring which is very neat so it's protected from the dust and whatnot pretty cool. I do wish that the ABS was switchable that you could just push a button and switch the ABS off. You get on dirt and these are functions that you need to have. It's got these very beautiful uh, I believe they're H755 watt light bulbs in the front. These are the projector type lights. Cat eye, I believe they're called. Uh, I just have protection over them. Really, really bright. Nothing negative to say there. I like the looks as well. Pretty, pretty aggressive looking. Here I have these lights that uh, both have the white and the, the amber light. The amber light is used in conditions like this because at night the, the sand actually reflects more in amber light than it does in white light. I think it was produced in Baja basically. In the Baja racing, they realized that the amber light does a better job in illuminating the sandy environments at night more so than the white light. Regarding other creature comforts, you get grip heaters as well. So for the cold weather riding, you know, it dips down below zero at night here. So I appreciate that very much. Simple to operate. So it's nice to have. Uh, I also noticed though, uh, I have different ways of heating my hands. I have heated gloves as well that heat the top of your hand, but then your bottom of your hand is cold as well. So it's nice to have both but uh, it's nice to be able to, to do that on this bike and on the go. You have this Matrix LCD display 
really really beautiful kind of militaristic looking very to the point no bs everything you need to know nothing that you don't you have the uh, rpms here the huge speedometer really really useful traction control which is you can set it this way the motorcycle has to be on you have the sport mode or the touring mode i like the touring mode most of the time just because it's less abrupt you get the time up here then you get the information sheet i'm not sure why they use that weird logo and not the internationally recognized eye symbol but uh, with the menu button on your left hand you can you can uh, adjust through it here you have three different levels of heated grips work great and uh, more information here's uh, how you can adjust the spring tension the preload the, the the adjustments for the front and rear between hard neutral and soft you get uh, ambient temperature coolant temperature and trip timer as well regarding fuel consumption this thing is fairly thirsty i average about 40 miles a gallon fully loaded in wind more or less 60 65 miles an hour you get a range meter here not super reliable i don't like to rely on it that's what i've noticed you get average fuel consumption and you get momentary fuel consumption as well not super useful uh, when you're riding kind of uh, leisurely you'll get a little signal here echo for economic riding uh, what i don't like about the fuel gauge itself is that you get one two three four five six bars but they're not related uh, not to my knowledge in any way uh, uh, to the actual amount of fuel in the tank even though the tank is 6.1 gallons it would be great if each bar is related directly to the amount of fuel that's being consumed so if you go through one bar then you went through one gallon of fuel you kind of have an idea that way as well but this last portion is all one bar so once that one bar is gone you're halfway through pretty pretty interesting design so you have the menu button and you have the controls <laughs> Uh, here you have the long lights and the passing cruise control you just press the button set it and forget it it's pretty great the only thing I don't like about it it takes about a second second and a half for it to respond if you want to accelerate or decelerate it takes at least a second for it to actually slow the motorcycle down or speed it up I wish it was immediate basically but it works perfectly because of the digital display you know exactly what what speed you're going at you could stay you know in the legal limit etc and then you have of course blinkers and horn these are just my auxiliary lights okay the handlebar tapered very very strong curved to perfectly suit your needs for very comfortable all day riding you could push out six seven hundred miles on this bike and really not feel tired at the end of the day so I, I appreciate that that's very important on, on stretches where there's a lot of wind a lot of traffic a lot of straight fast riding this bike eats miles uh, like no other you uh, I love the fact that you can get to a place and not feel exhausted and in pain so this is this is really really a great motorcycle for that kind of adventure tour uh, you also get a 12 volt uh, outlet and I wish they included a window on the hydraulic uh, master cylinder here because there's no really adjustments other than the lever adjustments for the clutch and the brake but it would be nice to, to, to know if there's an issue if there's a little too much play or something on the right hand side you get the uh, hazard flashers and funny enough it's it's so well hidden that if if you accidentally you don't know this bike and you accidentally press that button you're going to be looking for it because then it, it it indents inside the switch and you cannot see it you basically have to look from underneath the motorcycle so it's really really well hidden you're not going to be accidentally turning that on i don't like how weak the motorcycle s sounds when it's starting up it's almost like like a weak battery my yamaha warrior had the same issue and i never enjoy i like strong starts like a, a big 350 cold cranking amp battery that starts that motorcycle this seems like it's wow wow you know it's it's winding up in the beginning it always starts never lets me down the key though is to let the initial start sequence on the display completely finish so turn the key give it two three seconds let the welcome screen pass let the fuel pump engage and finish and then start the bike you don't want to be starting it when as, as soon as you turn the key that's that's a key that i've noticed really makes a difference on this bike mirrors 
do their job they're they're actually fairly flexible so they can bend a little bit if you lay it down but if, if you lay it down they're not going to be touching because i do have protection here speaking of protection i i like this big cage it's serious it means business this is uh just uh it, it does the job and it's actually the same brand as this aluminum skid plate the t-rex racing produces these amazing products and they actually have aluminum pucks here to protect the skid plate from the falls uh, you will probably drop this bike hopefully nothing serious nothing too fast but if you drop it it's fine it can handle it uh, when you have this protection obviously plastic would get ruined without it so it's good to have another kind of good function of this t-rex bars is that i can actually and i know this is going to be a little controversial but uh, to each their own i can put a foot up here i can put a leg up here with the cruise control on these big wide open vast stretches with no dangers of animals crossing the road etc visibility is great it's just so easy to munch so many miles that way comfortably you know when i activate the cruise control of course one hand always on the controls but it's just a very very comfortable way to cruise what i also like about the t-rex racing uh, skid plate uh, aside from being super substantial you can see here it's, it's about three millimeters of of uh, material there is that changing oil is super easy because you can just take that panel off and right there is the outline of the oil filter very very smart design the gas tank is actually steel and they do that on purpose so that you can put a magnetic tank this particular one is matte color and it's kind of easy to scuff up but that's the nature of the business we're in you're gonna scuff it up so don't don't worry too much about that part of the tank is actually sat below this frame here so that you can have a lower center of gravity it's a 6.1 gallon capacity tank that's around 23 liters of fuel i gotta say it, it does sip fuel pretty quickly it's a thirsty bike so i'm getting 40 miles uh, a gallon max that's been the Mac although it's been windy so it's kind of hard to judge and I'm also very heavy I think that comes out to around five and a half liters per hundred so it, kilometers I mean you're gonna be spending some money you feel it definitely with fuel in California now hitting seven dollars a gallon so I've been fueling up pretty regularly the range is also not super amazing in that regard I'm getting somewhere around let's say 250 max it'd be nice to be able to hit 300 mile mark but in my other luggage set up on the top case i actually have a two gallon roto packs for more serious more long distance trips where there's less chances for gas stations such as baja or something to that effect so in that regard uh, i wish the motorcycle was a little more fuel efficient and thus had a better range because you don't want really any larger fuel capacity than 6.1 that's that's plenty that's you know what the klr also has maintenance wise on this motorcycle pretty impressed I've been reading through the book and even things like valve clear clearance which is a more serious more labor intensive preventative maintenance basically is not due until 42,000 kilometers that's 26,000 miles I love that I love that I don't want to be doing any of that and I don't want to have to pay somebody a thousand bucks to do any of that so it's pretty neat that you don't have to do that yet this bike at the moment has 22,000 miles and it's just been a joy a joy to, to ride a joy to own and a joy to get to know that pretty much covers the bike i think it's an awesome machine for long distance transcontinental touring but for serious adventure touring that involves a lot of difficult dirt you're going to want something that's lighter because this is very difficult for for those kinds of roads uh, it just the weight sucks the motorcycle down into the ground and it makes it difficult to control even pushing it around on, on the ground like this is laborious like you're, you're you're really fighting it you know so i love the motorcycle for these kinds of trips where i need to punch out a lot of miles it's mostly straight it's mostly highway it's windy and i can carry everything i need but if i were to do any kind of more technical riding more technical meaning anything that's more technical than this it would be not my bike of choice just because of the weight but they definitely still have their place in the adventure touring market and i'm glad that yamaha is pushing these out because uh, they've built a reputation on reliability and they've built a long following 
and of course with them comes the s s smaller brother the 700 Tenere so one thing I've learned now in a little longer term ownership this bike doesn't sell very well it does not uh, have a very good resale value and I've spoken to a few dealerships here and despite all the aftermarkets and everything that I have in this gorgeous bike I can't get more than eleven thousand dollars for it which is incredible you know obviously that's dealer price that's not trade-in that's just outright sale and I just think it's a hell of a lot of bike for that price so if you're getting this bike for the long term it's a great investment and you can buy them for cheap for what, what you get for it but if you are planning to maybe down the road sell it it's it's one of the only bikes that I've experienced difficulties getting bites on I mean nobody's even calling and I've had it on the market for over a month for a, a very reasonable price below market value actually below K Kelly Blue Book and Nata Guides and everything that's on the market I'm the cheapest one on Cycle Trader I've had it on Facebook Marketplace offer up Craigslist I always do that uh, just to taste the market to see what it's doing and for some reason this bike is just not getting any traction everybody's gobbling up the 700 the dealership here says that that older version is only eight and a half thousand it's got 30,000 miles but nobody's even calling for that so previously I visited a dealership where they sold a new one for 16 heavily discounted after some out-of-state buyer talked them down a few grand so it's kind of interesting they, they it took a year to sell it a year to sell it in this market very very interesting I feel like San Diego is a harbinger for the rest of the country it tells you what's coming in the market so if it's hard to sell these bikes here then I imagine it's gonna be harder to sell them elsewhere uh, I the more I ride this bike the more I like it and I have an issue as you can see here let me show you with um, carpal tunnel so I have this little homemade remedy of alleviating some of the pressure there and I noticed that if I ride on the highway within 15 20 minutes my hands are going numb so it's really really helpful to have the cruise control and I've been enjoying those kind of amenities and the extra power and I, I'm starting to like the bike the only thing I had to change back to is the stock exhaust despite it being much heavier as you can see the aftermarket exhaust burning too lean too hot because you no longer have the catalytic converter if you don't have any kind of uh, power commander to adjust for that change you're gonna burn probably too lean so it was starting to melt everything and honestly it was just so loud it was so loud that my I would come off the bike and my head would be buzzing you know and I don't enjoy that so even though this one is 10 pounds heavier at 13 pounds right now I don't hear it and I, I prefer that the older I get the more I value my health you know from uh, years and years of riding it's it's a it's a tough thing to do so the easier you can make it on your on your body the better and that's where all these amenities come in mind such as the heated grips the wind protection the the cruise control etc so yeah very surprised at how difficult this bike has been to resell so I think I think I'm gonna just end up keeping it for a while longer well thank you for watching I'm really glad that Yamaha has been pushing these motorcycles out and, and still with a lot of success because there definitely is a market for them maybe that's you I hope this review has helped you figure that part out Nick Pegasus Motorcycle Tours and Consulting always a pleasure till next time